All righty, it's noon o'clock. So this is the second Walls webinar. We do these usually Thursdays noon, nothing set in stone on that. Okay, this particular one is by Tom Baird and we'll have an introduction of him in a moment. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm John Quarterman. I'm the Sewanee Riverkeeper. And we're going to have a oh, look, we're having someone else coming in. We're going to have an introduction by the Walls president, Sarah J. Jones, whom you can probably see here. So, Shirley, could you please introduce our speaker? Oh, excuse me, Sarah, can you please introduce our speaker? <laughs> Hey, thanks everybody for coming. Um, today we're going to have Tom Baird speak. He's been an educator for many, many years. Um, he's taught numerous subjects, including microbiology and oceanography. He is also the author of A Year on the Bay, St. Joseph Bay. Sorry, got tongue tied a little. St. Joseph Bay, Cape San Blas, and its beaches. It's available on Amazon and Kindle, and mine should be here today. So if the UPS truck runs by, my dog's going to go crazy. I'll try to mute it. But um, we've got a lot of stuff to talk about today. So if you have any questions, please just jot them down and hold them to the end. We'll have about a 15-minute period to where we'll do Q&A after the webinar. And over to you, Tom. Great. Thank you, Sarah. I appreciate it. Um, and when you get your book, I'll have to get together with you and sign it. Be happy to. Uh, John, can you pull up the um, PowerPoint? Sure can. Just wanted to be sure I got a screenshot of you first. <laughs> you can delete that. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, everybody. It's a pleasure to uh, actually uh, do the second Walls webinar. Um, and I think this is a great series. Uh, looking forward to more of them. The Walls does such a great job in terms of protecting the rivers uh, up in that area. And uh, they just need a lot of encouragement and people to listen to them as far as protecting the rivers. Um, what we're going to focus on today is one of those rivers, which is the Withlacoochee, and talk a bit about how people have used the Withlacoochee through time, uh, some of the uh, historical and archaeological sites on the Withlacoochee, uh, and hopefully give people some ideas of things they could do on other rivers as far as looking at the history of the river and so forth. So, John, give me the next slide, and I'll just say next slide every time I need one. That should work. There are two rivers uh, named with Uh The other one is uh, flows out of the Green Swamp in central Florida and flows into the Gulf of Mexico, and it's a pretty neat paddling river, too. Um Part of the problem, though, is if you are to Google uh, with Lacoochee River, you may start seeing uh, images and uh, historical accounts and so forth of the other with Lacoochee. So be very careful when you're uh, going uh, online and researching with Lacoochee River and so on. You may be getting information on the other one. Um, the one we're focusing on, of course, is flows out of South Georgia into uh, North Florida. And this river sort of suffers because it's bisected by the state line. What that means is what happens is in both states, it's often treated as a minor river or not even mentioned in canoe and paddle guides, which is really a shame because it's a great paddling river. Um, uh, this river, uh, the watershed drains an area, uh, that's actually, uh, larger than the state of Delaware and is a major, uh, tributary of the, uh, Swanee. Next slide, please. 
This is a picture of where the uh, Withlacoochee and the Suwannee River join. The Suwannee is on the right side of the slide, Withlacoochee on the left. And if you were just a casual observer uh, early in some early period and so forth, and first looking at this, you would be hard pressed to say which one is the major river, which one is the tributary, that sort of thing. Um, and we'll see that historically there was a bit of confusion and disagreement on that. Uh, the Withlacoochee, the river on the left there, um, 22 miles above the point that's pictured there at the Panetta ga uh, gauge station, uh, measures a flow of about 1,700 cubic feet per second. And that's before uh, a first magnitude spring at Madison, uh, in Madison <laughs> County, Madison Blue Spring flows in plus numerous second magnitude spring. So by the time it reaches the Swanee, it's got a flow of about 2,000 to 2,200 cubic feet per second, which accounts for uh, roughly 16% of the flow of the Swanee in any given year. So it's a major contributor. Uh, about the same amount flows from the Santa Fe River further down. So between the two rivers, they're contributing about a third of the flow of the Suwannee. Next slide, please. The Withlacoochee, this North Withlacoochee, is characterized by a, as a, a drop and pool river. Uh, as the paddler knows, you will go along for a while and then you're going to come to uh, rapids, riffles, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, there's a nice class one rapids at the Florida Georgia border. So you go along and you meet these points, the river descends, and then you have long lake-like periods. Um, the point of the rapids, most of them, uh, are actually fossil coral heads. And we'll see that uh, that agatized fossilized coral was very useful to early people. Uh, as you go along, you're gonna find lime rock uh, agatized coral. The coral is fairly well preserved. In some places on the river, you can actually identify it. It's uh, Siderastria uh, coral, which you, if you've ever dived or snorkeled in the Caribbean down at the Florida Keys or whatever, you snorkeled over Siderastria. This dates from the Miocene period and so on, which tells us that this whole area was once a warm, shallow sea. So that Drop and pool type of configuration of the river, of course, creates some problems in terms of using the river for transport. This meeting is being recorded. Uh, next slide, please. Um, if you're not speaking, please mute. Hey, don't you love technology? It's great. Well, I'm uh, back. <laughs> Hi, Lisa. Hey, I'm back. Yeah, you're not the one that was having the feedback. So uh, oh. Tom is proceeding with his talk. Okay. okay here, here we are in Georgia. This is the Withlacoochee Waterhead. And kind of remember this Y shape um, because you're going to see it again in some of the maps. Uh, the blank area in the middle is actually the flow of the uh, Little River. Uh, the Withlacoochee arises out of an uh, area uh, physiographically called the Tifton Uplift, Uplift District. And all the streams in that, from that area flow toward the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, waters uh, start to make up below the uh, delightfully named towns of Enigma, and Alapaha and start to converge together. One stream comes out of Lake Sap. And by the time it gets down to uh, Nashville, Georgia, it's named the Withlacoochee River, 
although for the most part, you can wade across it and just get your ankles wet. It's not very deep. All through in here, it is basically a blackwater river. It's getting uh, a dark tannic uh, water out of swamps and uh, wet plains from cypress domes and so forth. So you've got a lot of vegetation decomposition and so forth, and it, it becomes a blackwater river. Next slide, please. Once it crosses into Georgia, uh, much of the land along the Withlacoochee is actually in state lands. It's state forest lands with a, an appreciable part of it being in the uh, Twin Rivers State Forest. Uh, a lot of this protects the wildlife along the river and so forth and also preserves some of the historical sites. Uh, there are a few, very few, actually, out parcels on the Withlacoochee in uh, Florida in which, you know, private individuals can, can have a house on the river. Next slide, please. Let's talk about the first peoples uh, that were moved. Well, go back a slide, I think, John. Yeah, the first peoples... Uh, to see uh, what would eventually, the area that would become uh, the Withlacoochee watershed uh, was during the Paleo-Indian period, the Pleistocene. Uh, this is during uh, the ice ages. Great ice sheets uh, came down as far south as the Ohio River and the Missouri River. And the peoples basically were nomadic. They were following the megafauna. Uh, they were following them around, mastodons, giant ground sloths, camels, horses, et cetera, et cetera. And um, the climate was much, much different from the when or what it is now. It was much cooler and much drier. Um, both people and uh, animals need water. And they would go to sinks uh, to get water. That was also a good place where animals could be hunted. Most of those sinks are really what where our springs are today. Um, the present day springs were mainly watering holes at the time and there may not have been any feet, uh, river per se. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. During the archaic period, which followed, that was when the climate was starting to be more uh, like it is today. Uh, archaic peoples established their camps around water sources, and they tended to stay in at sites longer. Um, it's during this period, sometime between 8,000 and 2,000 years ago, Probably what we know as the Withlacoochee, Withlacoochee started to have a consistent flow, uh, linking up some of the deeper sink sites and so forth. Um, the archaic peoples would use um, uh, migrating fish. Use uh, That's a good indication there was a good flow, was the fact that they were harvesting fish on a regular basis. And they established stone fish weirs uh, on uh, the Withlacoochee. Next slide, please. Next. This is a helicopter shot looking straight down at the well-documented stone fish weir just below Madison Blue Springs. Uh, in the upper left, you see the clear waters of Madison Blue Springs coming in, mixing with the dark tannic waters of the uh, Withlacoochee. As you're paddling along, if you come to a line of stones uh, that are the size that, say, a person could pick up and carry and in place, uh, you're likely looking at a uh, stone fish weir. Uh, from the archaic period. Uh, you can go 
on YouTube and see videos of uh, stone fish weir, say in Tennessee. Uh, fish weirs existed from Maine to Florida. Next slide, please. Here you see the same weir, but with a reflection, you can you can see where the stones are, and then the opening on the left where the Indians would have placed their nets. Uh, so they would herd the fish, uh, most likely mullet, though they could have been uh, also uh, harvesting sturgeon, since sturgeon do come into the lower part of the Suwannee. They could have been harvesting shad. There is a species of shad that comes into the Suwannee now. Nothing in the numbers that there used to be historically, but it's very possible archaic people were harvesting uh, uh, large schools of shad too. Mullet would certainly be a good bet. Uh, what's sort of interesting as you paddle down the Withlacoochee, the opening is always on the left and nobody quite knows why. But if you're coming along and you get on, don't want to go bouncing over rocks if the water level is at, at that about that level and you don't want to be scraping the bottom of your kayak, go to the left. That's where the opening is going to be. Next slide, please. By the woodland period, this is what most people are thinking about is when they think about uh, Indian, uh, Indians, Native peoples, and so forth. Um, by this point, they were using bow and arrow technology instead of uh, atlatls. Uh, this is the period in which you start to see uh, the growth of, growth of political elites, social stratification. Uh, you had chiefs, um, et cetera, and you start to see mound building. This is where some of the great mounds uh, during this period are built and so forth. There was some mound building during the archaic, but um, this is the period where you see a lot of it. There's evidence for mounds on the Withlacoochee, especially down in Hamilton County. There's some old photographs of them. If you talk to some of the old timers, they can point out where there once was a mound in their field and their granddaddy plowed it down. Uh, Florida State uh, archaeologist Calvin Jones did document one mound in Hamilton County and was able to measure it and describe it. And there's a really intriguing newspaper article from a Valdosta paper, in the, I think it was around the 1880s or 90s, in which a group of uh, prominent gentlemen described their trip up the Withlacoochee to investigate a mound and some earthworks. Um, so there may be mounds north of Valdosta. Unfortunately, the newspaper article <laughs> didn't give many clues as to where that might have been. It's probably been destroyed by this point. Next slide, please. The first Europeans to uh, see the Withlacoochee watershed were the Spanish. And two Spanish missions were established in the watershed. One is Santa Cruz uh, near uh, Twin Lakes. That has been uh, studied somewhat archeologically. Um, unfortunately, the main part of that site is under a parking lot on a rest stop on I-75. So it's been destroyed. The other is one that was uh, at the confluence of the Wiplacuji and the Swanee. Uh, that one, the name translate to St. Francis of the Sinkhole. Unfortunately, uh, that narr doesn't narrow down where it is very much because that area has lots of huge sinks. Uh, and But that site has never been located, and a lot of knowledge could be gained if that site could be located. Uh, the chief participated in the Temucuan uh, revolt, and the Spanish, in punishment, moved all the people from uh, that particular mission down to the uh, Camino Real, that 
string of missions uh, between St. Augustine and Tallahassee, and then eventually going on to the Apalachicola River. So there are a lot of uh, lost missions that haven't been found. And one is right there next to the Withlacoochee. Next slide. As the early white settlers uh, came into the river, naturally a lot of people decided that uh, maybe the Withlacoochee could be used for shipping. And there is an account of some gentlemen in Troopville uh, taking a barge down the Withlacoochee and wound up walking back. Uh, if they wanted to ship down the Withlacoochee, I don't know how they thought they would come back over the rapids, but there is a barge sunk in the Withlacoochee that has been uh, documented. Uh, it's the Little Jack shipwreck, and uh, it's a Thorpe, Thorpe ship uh, planking barge, which just means, as you see in the illustration, the planks run from side to side rather than longitudinally. So people did try to use the Withlacoochee uh, to ship things. Next slide, please. Uh, there was a lot of confusion about naming of the rivers and what river was what, especially in the 1820s and 30s. This does create some problems in terms of uh, reading old accounts and them describing or giving the name of a river. Um, on this one, you'll notice it's probably hard to see on your screen. It'll be small, but what we now call Okapilco Creek was labeled as the Withlacoochee and the little river coming down the middle of that Y was the Suwannee River. So the Withlacoochee was the Suwannee. And the river that, that to the right by Franklinville didn't have a name. Next slide, please. Here's another example of that. It's got the uh, Little River named, but the Withlacoochee is what where we call, uh, what we now call with uh, Okapilco Creek. And then below that, it's the Swanee. Next slide, please. Here's one from 1834. Over to the left, you see the Withlacoochee is labeled the Swanee, and above where they come together was known as the Little Swanee. And you see that a lot, where that area is, or that part of the river is always called the Little Swanee. Next, please. This is 1856, where it's getting pretty late as for as far as the consensus is concerned. Here are the map makers and the information they were getting. They, I think they threw up their hands. And over to the left, you see the Withlacoochee is called the Swanee Coochie. So they just decided to combine the two. Total confusion at that point. Next. Next slide, please. Um, there, there we go. This is the 1846 Bruff map, and here it's labeled pretty much, you know, the consensus as it is today. Um, from that part on, more or less, uh, by 1855, the uh, Colton map of Georgia has it labeled uh, the way we label it. Uh, pretty much by the time of the Civil War, there seemed to be agreement as to what was the Swanee and what was the Withlacoochee. So any accounts that you read after that, you, you can pretty rely on which river they're talking about. Although in 1908, there was a paper company that published a big map and they had the Withlacoochee labeled as the Swanee. And as late as 2005, the uh, 
Florida Forest Service published a state map of Florida state forests, and they label the Withlacoochee as the Suwannee. So it goes on even into the 21st century. Next, please. During all the pioneer times and so forth, there were a lot of uh, towns established and abandoned and so forth as transportation routes changed and so on. You have Franklinville, um, which was the uh, original county seat of Lowndes. And it was described as the site of a good spring and a bridge crossing. And of course there is an abandoned bridge there now, it's a concrete bridge. And just below that is a spring boil. It doesn't flow anymore. Maybe that was the spring that they liked and why it was established there, hard to tell. Troopville was of course extremely important in the development of South Georgia. Uh, and it is at the confluence of the Withlacoochee and the river. Uh, that is an area that you know, is planned for parks and, and so forth, and much more needs to be done there. Olympia, going on down river, is on the Georgia side of the river. Uh, it was a sawmill town, and uh, it was a railroad town for the Georgia and Florida Railroad. All the railroads back then seemed to have nicknames, and that was because of the GNF logo was labeled Old God Forsaken. Um, there's the remains of the trestle on the river, which is, you know, kind of a stark reminder of, of days past. That's a big item that's, uh, abandoned on the river. Belleville further down, you can still see, uh, the old Camelback Bridge. There's a concrete bridge there now, but the old steel Camelback Bridge is on the left side of the river just abandoned there, and you can still see the ferry landing uh, on both sides of the river. Uh, Rossiter's or Rossiter's Ferry shows up on a lot of the early maps. It was a major crossing point of the river. Uh, Forest or Echo is across from Madison Blue Springs, and <clears throat> frankly, I'd never heard of it until talking to an old gentleman in Hamilton County said, you know, there was a town over there below the highway, and I went to school there and started talking to him, and he filled it in. It was a major turpentine area. There were churches, schools, et cetera. A later survey of the Twin River State Forest, as we, we found where the uh, turpentine works were with the bricks and numerous broken hurdy cups and so forth. It does appear on all maps. It's variously uh, labeled echo or forest. Mostly it's labeled as echo. So out in the woods, there's an abandoned town. Ellaville, um, it was the largest sawmill in Florida at the time and also the home of a Florida governor. Next slide, please. This is the Withlacoochee uh, at the time of the uh, Ellaville sawmill. Uh, the Withlacoochee wasn't great for shipping, but it was sure good for floating logs. So this is the period post-Civil War when the Withlacoochee uh, basically became an industrial river. Uh, the nation was booming, growing, and it needed uh, lumber. So this is the time of the vast areas of cutting down the longleaf wiregrass pines uh, habitat and cutting the yellow pine or the longleaf pine uh, was a big business. And this mill here on the Withlacoochee uh, uh, made uh, Governor Drew rich and uh, and his partner, Bucky Ridge. Next slide, please. This is on the Suwannee uh, at the same time. So they were shipping logs or floating logs down the Suwannee too. So over on the right, 
you see the, uh, that's the point you saw in an earlier picture where the two rivers come together. So it would float them down and around that bend and pull them up into the mill. And you'll notice also the uh, covered bridge. That's where the railroad bridge is now. And um, the old highway bridge and so forth that's there. Next slide, please. Here is a map of the uh, uh, giant sawmill at uh, Ellaville. Uh, down at the bottom of the slide, you see uh, the Withlacoochee River shown. And it was powered by a huge steam engine with about six, which powered about 16 saws. Uh, it was a quite a town. I mean, I had a you know, post office, churches, schools. Uh, the railroad went through there. This was perfect. You could get the uh, logs off the river and put them up and then put them on a train to ship in both directions. Uh, Drew uh, actually, actually had a swimming pool for his workers and so forth. Uh, it, was, it was quite the operation. Next slide, please. Uh, Drew was uh, the first post-reconstruction governor in Florida, and he really put Florida back on a uh, business-like basis. Uh, he built this mansion uh, next to his mill. It doesn't show in this picture, but the railroad came right in front of his mansion. Uh, so this was probably taken in the 1870s, maybe the latter part of the 1870s. It's not entirely known. Um, eventually, of course, uh, the Longley Pine played out. It no longer was economical. Uh, Drew pulled up stakes and moved to Jacksonville. And... Uh, Bucky, his partner, took over, lived in this mansion for a while. Uh, when Drew was governor, he just went out and caught the train into Tallahassee every day and did what governors do, uh, signed papers, met with people, and took the train back to Ellaville at the end of the day and so forth. So he did not reside in Tallahassee. He decided and resided in Ellaville. Next, please. If you're not keeping up with house maintenance, this is what your house could eventually look like. Uh, when Bucky pulled out, he left the mansion, and this photo was what it looks like in the 1930s, or what it looked like. Next, please. This is what it looks like in the 1950s, totally abandoned. Next, please. Here you see the railroad, how close the railroad went in front of it. In the 1970s, uh, there was a forest fire and that uh, destroyed the remains of the mansion. Next, please. This is what it looks like today. It's just the foundations and, and so forth. There were numerous outbuildings uh, which have not been identified where they were. There's also a cemetery. One of Drew's sons drowned in the Withlacoochee. And uh, he's he's buried there in the cemetery, but that site has not been located. Next, please. Uh, this is some of the remains of the mill. This is labeled as Swanacoochee Springs, and some people claim this is where you know people went to swim and and so on. And they may be confusing the fact that Drew did uh, uh, provide a big swimming pool for his workers which has been filled in now, of course. That's the Withlacoochee in the background. Uh, but, but this was not used for recreation. This was part of everything, uh, the, the equipment, the machinery to pull the logs out of the river. And really, the springs had nothing to do with it. Uh, right along that way, on the edge of the river, is really hard lime rock. And they use that to anchor the cables. There's still uh, rebar uh, driven into the uh, hard lime rock ledges there. So it was part of uh, 
the big contraption that would haul the uh, logs up uh, from the river to go into the mill and so forth. So it's sort of an interesting uh, artifact of that industrial period. Next, please. So that sort of brings us up to modern times. The river now is used primarily for recreation, fishing and uh, paddling and so forth. It's a beautiful river, but uh, there are plenty of threats to the river. Uh, you've got a lot of agricultural runoff, uh, which of course adds a lot of uh, nutrients from fertilizers and herbicides and so on. Some of the most dramatic, of course, is over pumping the aquifer. A lot of the springs up in Georgia have gone dry. And of course, one of the, the biggest examples is the Blue Springs uh, in Brooks County uh, that was once a big resort and so forth. And it's, it's dry. Of course, humans kind of help that. Uh, exotic plants have been introduced, uh, water hyacinths in 2007, and when the water is low and it's summer, they really go crazy. In both Florida and Georgia, uh, spray. Uh, you've got point sources, uh, overflows of municipal sewage, and so on. And the Withlacoochee is in danger of uh, looters. Uh, you don't I see much uh, digging, but there is a lot of diving in the rivers where divers are looking for fossils and uh, Indian artifacts. And divers can be very helpful if they find these sites. If they report them, uh, they have led archaeologists to major sites. But if they're just collecting souvenirs, they destroy the whole uh, body of information that that could inform us about things that went on in the past. Next, please. Uh, there are many areas that really need further investigation. And what I would say is uh, Troopville, to me, would be number one. It was so important in terms of uh, uh, the development of South Georgia, and there has been no archaeological investigation of it, no scientific uh, investigation of it. Much of that site, of course, part of it was destroyed by the building of the prison and a highway, as well as terraforming bulldozer work for uh, the, the boat ramp there, but much still remains. So uh, all along uh, the Withlacoochee and other nearby rivers, uh, they really beg for really good scientific investigation. Next, please. Basically, as you're paddling down the river, and I hope you get out and paddle down some of the rivers soon, get your paddle wet uh, because it's just a pleasant day. It's getting warmer and it's a great time to get out on the rivers. But when you do, I hope you're keeping your eyes open for things on the river. Each river has so much to tell in terms of its history, the people that once lived there. If you see something, pull over and investigate. Talk to some of the old timers. They'll tell you stories of things that happened there. Look at the old maps. Any of the rivers uh, are just uh, a library of uh, things that people often overlook, but they're there. And uh, while you're enjoying a, a fun paddle and a relaxing day, also keep your eyes open for that kind of thing. I appreciate your attention. I'll be happy to take uh, any questions or comments before turning it over to John. Uh, please remember to unmute to ask a question. John, well, Thank you very much. That was very enjoyable. Thanks, Suzanne. Uh, Suzanne, are there other sources of pollution in the river other than sewage? Well, absolutely. Wouldn't have to do with cows, would it? 
We might have cows. We might have hogs. We might have plastic. We have all sorts of things. For example, those styrofoam. Mm hmm. Those 10,000 cattle in Brooks County, Georgia, turn out to be a problem. Absolutely. On what used to at one time was considered the Withlacoochee River, apparently, based on this discussion. <laughs> oh, and in Colquitt County, they call it the Okapilco River. Hmm. And historically, when the Okapilco has flooded, it really did some damage. It's not much to look at now, but there have been times when it really flooded. I'm glad you mentioned cattle because once you're in Florida, there's like a, some cattle area, a ranch area. And I've just seen cattle waiting out in the river. They're just out there in the river and so forth. So you're getting a lot of, uh, you know, fertilizer coming into the river from cattle all the way down. Fertilizer. Yeah, that's a word for it. All right. This is one of those with the coochie agates fossilized coral that you were referring to. This one came out of the Lithicucci River. I guess I need to shine a bright light on it so you can see how shiny it can be. Uh, we did not take this out of the river. We, uh, we actually purchased it. So Joanne wants to say a word. Yes. Hi. Um, thank you, Tom, for your presentation. Um, you did mention the drying up of springs, and recently we've been talking about the effects of phosphate mining on our rivers and springs. Do you, can you elaborate on the effects of the nutrient mine up in Hamilton County? Thank you. No, I know what you're talking about, but uh, no, not really. Um, I've just followed some of the news accounts and and so forth, and never bodes well when you see that uh but no i i can't add really anything to that particular mine um, um possibly because as you know joanne that one's actually on the Samwani river i hope y'all can see the map here oh right not with lacucci right um walls and Swanee Riverkeeper deal with the entire Swanee River Basin, 10,000 square miles in two states, 36 counties. And the mine you're talking about is here. Um, actually, yes, that's it. It's easy to spot when you're flying over it because it looks like the moon. Why am I over the moon? Why am I still over the moon? And it's very near to the south, there's the Swanee. And over here to the right, that's the Swanee. It sort of curves around it. And in White Springs, there's um, one of the very first tourist attractions in Florida was White Sulphur Spring. It's still this huge bathhouse, but the spring only trickles. Now, nutrient claims that has nothing to do with their massive water withdrawals for the nearby mine. But when they stopped withdrawing as much a couple of years ago, the spring started flowing more. So I think it might be related. So, Thank you, yeah, the one we're mostly talking about today is the Withacoochee River, which. Um, We have the Withacoochee and Little River water trail map. And one of the places that Tom was talking about was Troopville, the old county seat of Lowndes County. That was a good question, Joanne, just a different river than he's mostly talking about today. And we know that some of the stuff that was in there still is in there. For example, this purple trail here, that's basically old Broad Street. That was the main drag of the town, which continues on the Valtech Road by the prison. Most of the streets were probably up here where the prison is. But some of them were down here. 
And we know a few sites, the main cemetery is well known and where there used to be a spring, there's not much of it due to too many water withdrawals. But there was another prison, another cemetery somewhere over here, probably the slave cemetery. I ran into the fellow who did the survey for the prison. He claims it's on there. I'm gonna try digging it up at the courthouse. Um, where's the place that the cows are by the river and the toxins are going in that river? In well, Livo? the place that probably Tom is talking about, where you can easily see them going into the river, is just across the state line. That's the state line. Livo? That's no, north of Livo. It's around oh, okay. the area. I have a cousin who owned a cattle farm over there in Live Oak. I was fixing to call him up. <laughs> yeah, this this is near. Now, on the Sawani, there yeah. is also an issue because downstream on the Sawani, um, I think we can probably spot it here. This is a huge dairy farm. They grow their own fodder, and the cows are nearby, and it's right next to the river. Oh, okay. right. So that's one of many. Uh, they don't have so much a problem of manure runoff, which is what we're seeing elsewhere. But, mm. you know, all the fertilizer they're putting on all, the, all that uh, place where they're growing the fodder is probably an issue. Where yeah. we know for sure that cattle are a problem is... Uh, there's the state line again. And this is, um, make sure I'm looking at the right thing. This is Okapilco Creek. Wait a minute. Yes, this is Okapilco Creek. And next to, next to Okapilco Creek, there are six large dairy farms. Actually, there's five. The other one's in a different watershed. And when, uh, due to our water quality testing program and assistance from, of all places, Valdosta was testing, Lowndes County was testing, so was the Florida Department of Health and the Suwannee River Water Management District. Okay. And we in Marilee Malwitz Gypsum, someone Joanne knows well, persuaded the Florida Department of Environmental um, Protection to do DNA markers and um, chemical tracer testing. And with all that, we narrowed it down, plus we did some additional testing on the most likely creek, which I'm not going to point out because when I went to the operator of the dairy farm, he was shocked and wanted to be part of the solution immediately. Oh. Been. That's shocking. They have fin well, nobody knew this until all this testing went on. I'm sure it'd been going on for many years, but nobody knew about it. Yeah. So that fenced the cattle back away from the creek and away from the ditches. So it doesn't just go straight into the ditches into the creek. They have uh, also grown up the vegetation by the fences so that helped stop it they've actually shipped cattle out to kansas to reduce the population and the only thing they do for that is we just don't mention their name in public the okay. thing, that seems a small price to pay <laughs> yeah agreed so they're over in this area and we know that there are more issues the big messy place is Valdosta. Upstream from Valdosta, um, there are a number of creeks coming in. The one that seems to be the problem is Cat Creek. And there are various things on Cat Creek, such as the Ray City Wastewater Treatment Plant and the treatment plant for Moody Air Force Base. Now, interestingly, from our testing so far, Ray City does not seem to be a problem, which still surprises me because they have notoriously bad sewage handling. It seems to be coming from farther up on Beaver Dam Creek. 
Okay. And, um, over at Moody, yes, we get high readings below their treatment plant, but we also get readings here above their treatment plant where there's nothing but the base. That makes no sense. We have a grant request in to look into that more, and we're you know conversing with the lieutenant colonel over at the base about that. So we'll try to nail it down. Okay. And in Florida, Joanne is one of our testers on the Santa Fe River and sometimes the Itchituckney. And um, we're always- Well, Joanne, I can come and help you if you want. Yes, please. You have to get trained first, which you can do. Just sign up on the training form. Okay. You want to know where to do that? Just go yeah. To... I've seen you on the Facebook page. Yep. Just go to walls.net and the... In the... But I'm the type that's got to calm down a little bit because I get a little carried away now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, but I'll just be kind, but... There you go, and sign up to do water quality testing. Then you get trained, and then, <clears throat> then we'll see about getting you testing. All right. Okay, um, I see Donald Davis on here. I can't believe he hasn't asked any questions. Hey, Donald. They all seem to be muted. Well, you have to unmute yourself, Donald. Maybe I can unmute him. <clears throat> Donald, did you have any questions? Look what I got. Hey. What is it? You got the book. <laughs> Sarah got the Great, book. Sarah. <laughs> I can't wait to read it so we can get together and talk about it. What is it? Perfect. A book that, well, it's in the panhandle of Florida. It's uh, Port St. Joe, uh -huh. but it's where me and my husband got married, and it's also where he spent his childhood summers. So, uh -huh. and Tom nice. wrote it. Oh, nice. Hope you enjoy it. I'm sure I will. I was looking that some of it i downloaded a sample and flipped through it a little bit last night and i'm excited i'm really excited <laughs> yeah well, it is nice i'm glad hey. you got the uh, print version because that's in color uh people who get the kindle version unless they have a kindle fire they just get black and white pictures and you you really yeah. need the color pictures i don't know if y'all can see yeah. this screen, but there's a little turtle yeah. Oh, <laughs> so, Tom, as you probably know, we helped fight off a liquid natural gas export terminal at Port St. Joe recently. John? That's Donald. Donald Davis. Hey, Donald. Hello, Tom Baird. It's been many years. Yes, it has. But you, you, you caused me to learn a lot, and I've always appreciated it. Chase no, it it, it, Chase it goes. It. I think it goes. It goes the other way. I learned a lot from you. <laughs> but uh, I've, I've, I, I, uh, with everything John and Walls has done, I have uh, continued a uh, a great fascination with uh, the with Lacucci and everything upon it here. And uh, and you were a uh, uh, you were the the reason a lot of that was begun, and it still is of. Uh, of uh the knowledge is still of great benefit today and uh and uh getting the with lacucci finally into florida to stay <laughs> well, for those of you who don't know him donald davis uh runs the lowndes county historical museum well i i i, I am now i am now a a uh, basically a retired volunteer but i'm doing just as much uh I think free that I used to get paid for. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want to research anything in the area or the with Lacucci and so on, uh, definitely go to that museum because they've got the old maps. They have tons of material 
uh, it, it's a great resource. It's a real treasure house of local information there. So I highly recommend it. John, it's not environmental, uh, but uh, when you were having me and we were trying to collect all things that could have happened on in the history of the with Laguchi, uh, I am still trying to get the photographs of the fellow that uh, told me his uh, he had been kin to uh, uh, Boss McFarlane that was known for his uh, moonshining and uh, and uh, different things and. He says he's got photographs of uh, of his moonshine still all shot up on the with the coochie, but I've been waiting about <laughs> 10 years to get them. And, <laughs> and you, you cannot chase everything. And uh, uh, and then one one lady way on up uh, uh, a church out Cat Creek, but they would baptize in the uh, in the with the coochie because it was deeper and. Uh, there's a copy of a copy of a copy out of an old uh, uh, church history, but it is a, a wonderful photograph of the lady who was the county uh, clerk here, uh, Sarah Crow for years, and her father uh, being baptized in the With Lacucci, but I haven't been able to get that either. But when you got us interested in the With Lacucci, it started going to everything you could tell about what rivers meant to their cultures. And uh, good, and that was that was just a part of it, but almost everything else. And uh, you caused us to learn the uh, find the name of almost the first ferry uh, across the uh, with Lacucci down into Florida, and uh, uh, and I, I think Philip Williams here may have found an even one that was even more short lived that was before that from Florida ferry records. But anyway, I, I when I saw you were going to be on, and uh, and uh, I I definitely wanted to uh, hear you speak. And even when we talked years ago, you told me you had so much access on the with Lacucci with uh, the state of Florida records. And so, and like you said, there is a there is a change when you reach the state line. So uh, you caused us to learn much about the the with Lacucci here that we may not have searched and, uh, and already Let's it's appreciated. Hello, me. John, John knows I'm bad to talk. I'll get off John, but thank you for all <laughs> you do and all of y'all that, that work so diligently with walls. Thank you. Donald Davis is a font of information. Just a little bit. We have this with Lacucci and little river water trail <laughs> with online maps and Z fold brochures and, Tells a little bit about the Withacoochee. Um, the whole thing is kind of large. It includes the Little River, too, of course, as far as the name. Regarding Troopville, you're all invited on March 2nd to paddle right by where the future Nature Park and River Camp will be on the Mayor and Chairman's Paddle. That's March 2nd. And it's free due to a grant by Georgia Power. Georgia Power also has been sponsoring our water quality testing program. Oh, that's cool. Still mystifies us, but they do. So <clears throat> online and on the Z-Fold brochure, you can find all the access points, the public access points, and um, some in idea of what kind of thing you're going to get when you go there and uh, the miles to the next one and approximate paddle time and other stuff like recommended low and high water and gauge. If you boink on this, you'll go to much more detail about each location. And this is kind of zoomed in on the upper part of it. Um, and this is the route of the mayor's paddle from Langdale Park boat ramp around past Three Mile Branch, where, yes, Valdosta had a $100,000 sewage spill, which turns out <clears throat> not to have been a collapsed pipe, as they thought, but because somebody put all sorts of stuff in that pipe that shouldn't have been there. Around by <laughs> Creek, which has had many fewer spills, and eventually we get down here. This is where the nature park will be. If all goes well, you paddle around the entire river boundary of that. And then below that, there's a bunch more 
across the state line just below state line boat ramp. And there's these ones in Florida. So that's um, from US 84 Knights Ferry. We got one going from Knights Ferry to Nankin on February 24th, where if you look closely, you may find some of these agatized corals. We do not put on the map exactly where you might find them because we don't want people digging for them. And then once you cross the state line, here are the ones in Florida, including some you may not be aware of below Allen Ramp. And way down at the bottom, Ellaville is right there at the Swanee Confluence. Okay, so this is how to reach us. We're all ears for suggestions. And we have all the usual contact methods, including four major social media that we post stuff on all the time. And we will have another of these things, another Walls webinar, I believe on February 14th. We aim for the second Thursday at noon. Although that's not set in stone, we might even have one in the evening. Okay. So I'd like to thank Hey, Sarah. You. I'm sorry. Send me your, send me your link for your husband's book. I got Kindle. Oh, this is um, it's for Tom's book. It's for the speaker. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. Tom. I have Kindle. Send me the link. Hold it up again, Sarah. Yeah, you'll or just... maybe I'll just find it myself. I'll just find it myself. In the Wait name. A little bit, so you can see it says Tom Baird on it. There we go. Yeah, okay. okay. just go to. Amazon put in a year on the bay. That'll do it. There yeah. You go. Okay. Thank you. There you go. Thank you, Tom, for doing the second thank you. webinar. I think everybody found it fascinating. You had, uh, I think, uh, 16 viewers in addition to you and me. And um, keep up the good work. Thanks, folks. You're doing good work. All right. Take care. Thanks, All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Man. Thank you, Tom. So for those of you who came in late, it is recorded. It will be on YouTube. We'll post about it on our social media. So you can watch the whole thing, even if you came in late. All right. Bye, guys. Bye for now. Good day.